The Sony a7 IV performs extremely well in low light situations. This shot, for example, is at 12,800 ISO. In a completely unideal situation, my main light is like a street light. It's like 50 feet away from me. And look how good this looks. I'm gonna show you exactly what's working well for me to get good low light footage out of the a7 IV. When I first started shooting videos on the a7 III way back, I kept seeing people getting amazing low light videos with that camera, but I was rarely making mine look good. So I spent years identifying what are the main things that are gonna lead to really good looking low light videos. And that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you in this video. It came down to three really simple things. Well, the first two are gonna be kind of obvious, but I'm gonna run through some best practices that might actually surprise you. And the last one wasn't quite as obvious to me, but was an absolute game changer. And when you get it right, you'll make your videos look like this even at high ISOs. This video is geared toward the Sony a7 IV, but 99% of the practices that we're gonna go through are applicable regardless of whatever mirrorless camera that you're using. The first thing that will make or break your low light videos is simply exposure. If you're anything like me, I'm sure you've come across the advice out there talking about for a log profile to overexpose to 0.3 on the meter or 0.7 or 1.3 or 2.0, and for non-log picture profiles to expose it to zero or maybe 0 0.3, I found this to be the worst method to get consistent results with my low light videos. And after a lot of trial and error, I've landed it using one method called zebras to get my exposure dialed and it works every time. This is exactly how I use zebras to get exposure and I use this exact same method whether I'm in a log profile or a non-log picture profile. This is the Ansel Adams exposure chart. I'll include a link below if you want a free copy of this and it represents all the values that we want to expose things to. This will all make sense. Let's simplify this a bit though, and only use the skin tones and the brightest highlights as those are the most prevalent in 90% of the shots that we're getting. Next, find the zebra settings in your camera. I've custom mapped the ability to turn the zebra display on or off to this button in my a7 IV, and this one to quickly change the values. The values here under these zebras match the chart perfectly. Let's say that we have this skin tone in the shot. I'll simply set my zebras to that value and then increase the ISO on the camera until the zebras start to show up on the skin, then pull back the ISO by one click and that will be my exposure. And if I don't have a skin tone in the shot, I'll find a light that is in the frame. I know that that would represent the brightest highlight in the scene, so I'll set my zebra value to match the chart, which in this case would be 100, and then do the same method of bringing up the ISO until the zebras start to appear on that highlight, and then pull back by one click and boom, we have exposure. Now look, using zebras is not a perfect method to get exposure. All the methods have different trade-offs, but I have found that using this method to be the most consistent in getting good exposure for my videos, especially the low light ones. If you're getting something from this video, let me know by giving it a tap down below on the thumbs up to let me know to keep making videos exactly like this one. The second thing that will absolutely increase your result with low light videos is using the right ISO. In short, as we increase the ISO gain in our camera, we're gonna slowly introduce noise into our image, which is gonna soften soften it, make it less sharp, maybe do some color shifting and ultimately introduce the noise into the shadows of the shot. The a7 IV performs well at high ISOs in general, but we also have the added benefit of a dual baseline ISO. Let's break down that dual baseline ISO. It's actually really simple, sounds complicated, it's pretty easy. Just for a moment, let's pretend that the a7 IV only has one baseline ISO. What even is a baseline ISO? Every picture profile is different in regards to what the baseline ISO is, but it's the lowest ISO that you can use in that given picture profile. So for the a7 IV and staying on this one baseline ISO example, let's say that I was in S-Log3 where the baseline ISO is 800. When I increase the ISO gain, the noise would simply increase until I ran out of ISO. So if I wanted a low noise image, the lower the ISO, the better. When we're in low light, we'll need to shoot at higher ISOs, which is where the challenges come into play with introducing some of that annoying noise into our image. But the a7 IV has a sneaky feature where we get a second baseline ISO that is exactly 
four times the baseline ISO. And I'm gonna include a free chart down below that includes every picture profile on the A7 IV, what the baseline ISOs are, and what their second baseline ISO value is if you want the cheat sheet. Anyways, back on our S-Log3 example, where 800 is the baseline ISO, what's four times 800? 3200, which will be our second baseline ISO, which means that 800 and 3200 are our best performers when it comes to having a low noise end result image. This means that I'd rather shoot at 3200 as opposed to even this value, which is less, because 3200 being that second baseline, we're gonna have a lot less noise. Naturally, and because of that second baseline ISO reset that we get, we can shoot in these high ISOs and maintain a sharp, low noise video. The final component that's giving me really good low light results out of my Sony a7IV, and this is the one that took me a while to get figured out, it's actually pretty simple, is my editing and color grading. I'm in Premiere Pro here. I know, I know, DaVinci's better, everybody hates Premiere now. I'm in Premiere, regardless of what you're using, what I'm gonna show you is universal and is applicable whether you're in DaVinci, Final Cut, or Premiere. I'm about to make some tweaks to the footage here. The amounts that you'll make these tweaks will vary depending on your shot, so keep that in mind. But generally, here's what you wanna do. I'll bring the contrast up, the shadows down and the blacks down. And yes, by making these tweaks, particularly bringing the shadows down and the blacks down, we're gonna be breaking the rule of not losing too much data in the blacks on our lumoscope here. But if I had to choose between losing some detail in the shadows or having more noise, I'll drop the shadows every single time. And here is what we are left with after making those small tweaks. Pay extra attention to the reduction of noise in the shadows. In addition to the great low light performance, if you're curious why the Sony a7IV is my main camera in 2023, as opposed to something like the a7S III, check out this video where I get into those details. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.